Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Rotrix 3D robotic arm. And in this video, I'm going to talk about all its pros, cons, and everything in between. And then finally, at the end, if you're interested in purchasing this or you think this is a cool product, I'll of course tell you my personal opinions on that. So, I want to start off by saying I am always extremely grateful when companies send me products to review. Like in this case, I feel obligated to disclose that. So this product right here is by far extremely well designed in the physical aspect. We'll talk about software later on, but for the most part, everything that is physically here is pretty well designed. Two caveats to that though, is that the 3D printing module is a little hard to get into. That means that if it jams, you're going to be out of luck because while yes, you can take off the nozzle, it gets extremely hard to try to get anything out of it because it is all kind of one solid piece. And while that is not really a big issue, it hasn't really jammed too badly on me and I was able to clean everything out. I have talked with some people that were on their Discord that also had similar issues. So while yes, it's not a deal breaker and I was able to fix mine, um, I something just to be aware of in that. Um, other thing is that the robot arm itself likes to fall down on at, at a certain level when you turn it off. Now they have kind of have this in their instructions so it's important to obviously respect that that you need to make sure the arm is at a certain height. My only issue with that of course is that when the power went out uh, the ro robotic arm died it was in the middle of a 3D print and melted through the 3D print when it fell on the print and I understand the caveat there but Obviously, for a product that is, I believe this is like a thousand dollar kit right here, it doesn't seem logical for me to have a product that just falls down. We have printers that are 500 to 600 dollars. I know this isn't a 3D printer, but or at least marketed as the major feature. But when you have a power outage, you would assume that A, it should be able to resume, and B, the robotic arm would not just like ruin the print that was already in. Obviously, I the print resume feature at that point, even if I wasn't able to find one isn't really useful anymore so that's my caveats with the design there um but besides that the design the physical design is pretty great i have absolutely no complaints with the packaging the packaging is by far some of the best packaging i've ever had for a 3d printer level product here as you can see everything fits in there my, another complaint though the only complaint i would have is that the 3d printing module doesn't go in this nice plastic packaging because i would absolutely love to take this and bring this to school or something or do you know workshops on 3d printing something i would absolutely love to do and this would be a great way to do it go to some high schools do some volunteering i would absolutely love to get into that but this is just really difficult to do that because well all the parts you have to carry the separate box and i would love this case is so awesome i just love to have it put in there all together i had a real difficulty finding use for the thematic module which i apologize i'm probably slaughtering that um but the module that was responsible for the air pump and basically gripping on two different things it is not that this is bad or it is not that it is you know not anything to do with it i just a i'm not that experienced in that kind of stuff so please take this with a grain of salt but i couldn't find any use for this the thing that i found most interesting and most useful about this was the 3d printing and was the laser engraving the part about picking up stuff well, yes, it is very cool. Um, it was kind of limited in what it could pick up due to like the size and stuff. And I couldn't really find any things to make just one thing to pick up and move. I would have difficulty finding use for that. So that being said, since it came all together in the same kit, I would have a difficulty figuring out what to do with it. When you have the thematic module in and plugged in, when you try to turn on the arm, it actually will crash altogether. It will just white screen, and as long as you leave it for 10 days, whatever, it's still going to have a white screen, which I tested it for like a day, so not 10 days. But it will just white screen, and then when you unplug it, it will finally boot. I feel like those kind of issues, a little annoying, especially for some, what this is targeted at, was targeted at, which is makers. Another issue, or another suggestion, not really an issue, but a suggestion that I'd have is I really would have liked a little CNC or a router module that would just go through and allow you to kind of manually cut things that were a little bit more difficult. This obviously engraves on wood, but it doesn't cut through wood and I would have liked something that could at least carve into it. 
absolutely no issue with what was already here. Maybe the 3D printing and other stuff I mentioned earlier. But a routing module, I feel, would be tremendously better. Uh, or at least an additional add-on that I really would appreciate. So, besides everything here being physical, the next part... I have a lot of critical points, but the good news is all my critical points can easily be fixed via software updates. So while yes, at the time of this video, I do have some issues, um, I definitely think that in time, what they already have here and what you would buy would be substantially decent. I think they could tweak some stuff on the 3D printing module, make it a little bit more easy to take apart and fix, and maybe put some you know lock in the 3D arm so it doesn't fall down. But besides that, really, I I can't complain too much about the physical design, which is good because the next stuff is a lot of software issues. So to describe the software experience on this, um, I would just have to say it's pretty poor. The reason why I say that is because this product, in my opinion, is targeted towards more um, more makers and more beginner makers. Sadly, though, when you go on their Discord server, um, you have a lot of survivorship bias, especially when you start looking through all the people. And that is in the term of when you go through and look through these people, these people are extremely technical and are able to solve a lot of the problems that are software related, whether or not coding or, you know, hacking into the arm to code in some new programming so that they can fix some of these issues. I talked with a substantial number of people that ended up returning this on their Discord that were having problems t returning this because the software was at the point, in, in their own words, unusable. Now, I also want to real quick stop, and I know that these people are watching us. I am 100% down to work through and help you guys solve the issues. I understand that there are problems with development, and I, I actually work in development. I understand that this stuff happens, but... And I also understand that at some point you have to put a product out in order to make money to pay for more development on this. And I understand all that. My issues are, and I'll explain them, they're all fixable. So it's difficult, especially to make these videos where you have some negative things to say. And it's difficult for companies to be willing to listen to those and work through them. And obviously the comment section, I'll try to pin any updates I have but I am trying to reach out a hand in this video. So let's get started. First off, when I went to 3D print on this, uh, the experience I had was pretty rocky. Um, to say that because when I have, I have some other high-end 3D printers that I've used. This printer is, well the printing module, and when you have it in the 3D printing mode, is pretty restricted to a certain build plate, which actually, let's get that build plate out real quick. So this is the, I guess, build plate. And in technicality, you don't actually need to use this. You can use any platform. So I didn't actually have much of an issue with this. The only issue was this was glass and when the arm failed or, you know, turned off or crashed and I had to turn it off, the arm just kind of actually put a couple nicks in my screen over here, or not my screen, my glass over here. And I was kind of afraid it was gonna shatter, so I had my 3D printing file on the actual, it's like the touch screen, it plugs into that. So I had that in there and I was leveling it, following all the directions, you know, going down, leveling it, saving it, all this stuff. And I would do all that and then it would just decide it's gonna print in the air and start printing in the air. Um, I clicked save, I did all the stuff, I followed the directions. So I reached out to them and they basically said, kind of, you know, you need to make sure you level it, which isn't too helpful, but okay. So I went on my computer and installed all their software. Uh, I went through and leveled it there, and I actually was able to get it to print. It actually printed Benchy for me um, after a couple failed attempts. But I finally got Benchy printing. Um, we'll talk about the software, about the printing software later on. This is like the fifth attempt. We'll talk about that. But going through, and I was able to get it to finally print. Um, the only issue is it doesn't save the calibration, which I understand at some point this should be, you know, yes, obviously things can change. But there's, obviously you want, A, this glass should not be sliding around when you're printing. Um, the feet on here are not that great. I wish some like, you know, rubber feet or something to hold this in place. But it didn't keep the calibration. So if you didn't change anything and you printed another thing, it would start printing in the air again. Which was kind of annoying in my own opinion. The slicer that they provide also has some issues, especially because certain settings it just bugs out altogether on the prints. And as you can see from a clip that I have earlier, it basically just prints a bridging test for Benchy, which doesn't really seem right. Also, 
Another thing I noticed when this print actually finished is that this print looks very stringy. Um, I would honestly say that my lowest, highest guess for this one is that the fan curve on the printing module is a little slow or inadequate. The fan module is just inadequate altogether for what it's printing because it's pretty stringy and there are definitely some pretty major distortions, especially because this arm is also printing on this glass pad. And if you don't keep this still, obviously you're gonna get distorted prints. So overall, the laser engraving module is actually okay. Um, only one issue I have with it is that I think this is more of a robotic firmware issue is that the same thing happened with the 3D printer head and it basically just bugged out and instead of printing random filament in the air, just decided to start burning into the cardboard and then into my table, kind of catching a little bit on fire. That's not really something you want in like a desktop product. At the end of this, it, out of all my comments today, let me ask the question, should you buy this? Well, there's a lot of weighing options here. First off, if you have $1,000 to spend, I there is a lot of comments that I can make. First off, the Fematic module, in my opinion, I could not find use for it. It is what I think a niche product because, well, yes, you do like actually having a robotic arm. The uses between besides moving things is not really there. Um, it's not like you could have it 3D print and then, you know, package it. I mean, that'd be cool, but you need like three of these. I, I, I struggle to find use for it. That is not saying you will. And if you think that's something you want, then great. I just, I personally could not find a use for it. The 3D printing module altogether is okay. Um, some things, some really good things actually is that the interesting way that it prints is that it leaves up all this printing space around it. It prints in like a half circle and it can print all in that area, which opens up to some interesting printing options. But it is somewhat limited in the qualities. If you're gonna buy this solely for a 3D printer, I flat, flat out do not recommend this. This is not sized right for a 3D printer. You're gonna miss out on a lot of printing options. The software is okay and the you know, power off protection and print resume protection really has some, at least some issues at the moment because it just flats out and goes. I feel like they could have easily added a retract feature if the power goes out. Um, there's a lot of things that I feel like they could have done instead of just having it fall on your print and ruining the print. Even if there is a print resume feature added in software, I feel like that's much more of a hardware issue. So overall, the printing is kind of annoying, especially with the software. Um, trying to get it to level and stay level. I feel like the software obviously should, once it's leveled, it should keep the same settings. Settings should persist, at least until you update um, or change those. But overall, um, it's very awkward in how it prints. The software is a little, you know, has some issues and I tried a good bit of time in Cura to get a default profile. Um, I was able to get one. Um, it still wasn't printing the best quality. So as for quality, you're gonna also kind of miss out a little bit on prints that have some bridging. You're gonna get some stringiness, but the fan on the nozzle could easily be cranked up and I feel like could be at least redesigned so that you actually have, um, you know, closer direct contact onto the print. The pen module itself, I f didn't find much interest in as a maker. Um, I understand that this product is designed to sell you more on the cool factor of robotic arm. Um, and I think it does that. I think it has all the things that that person would use, but as a maker, looking at it from the maker point of view, um, the pen module, I, I mean, if you want to write some cards or print, you know, make cards with actual pen, that's cool. Um, but I also, I mean, I drew some stuff, but that was like it. Um, I mean, it's, it does what it's supposed to once you configure it properly. It's, it's pretty decent there, but I mean, I couldn't find use for it. If it's something you want, then obviously go for it. Now that laser engraving module, I think is actually a cool feature. And I think it's actually what makes this somewhat worth buying. Um, the Fematic module, not so much. The pen, I could care less. Uh, but the laser engraving and the 3D printing, the fact that it can do both is what really kind of puts it up there. If they were to add another module, just like a maker's kit, for example, 3D printing module, laser engraving module, and like a router CNC module, I would be all on board for paying 
$50,000 for this. If they could maybe make these arms a little bit longer and have a little bit of range, I, I think that would be pretty cheap just to kind of keep the same, extend it, just extend the arm, make it have a little bit more range. And I would 100% be down for spending the $1,000 for that because all of those features all together for that much distance, if they were chain or tweak the things that I've said in this video, I would be all done for that. But in reality, we're looking at this. And the fact that this arm itself, just by itself, it's about $600. And if you add in the 3D printing module, you're looking at probably about $800 um, with the laser engraver. I $800 for the 3D printer and laser engraver. It really depends on what you're looking for here. If you want the cool factor of a robotic arm, um, the software is at the time of this video pretty buggy. I think a lot of things can be said here. Um, and in conclusion, really, I definitely could see this working for someone that wants to take both advantage of the laser engraver and the 3D printing module and wants the cool factor of a robotic arm in the background. Um, as for me though, uh, just my personal use over the last couple the weeks and stuff, um, I've ended up using this a lot less than I thought just because, you know, I thought this was going to be a cool product and it definitely is. But the reliability issues really would make me rather use the $300 printer that I purchased myself than using this at the time of this video. Now, I definitely think that all these issues can be solved. And I fundamentally think this is a solid design, a, a solid product. I mean, it's got flaws, but I feel like the flaws that are physical are okay, they're manageable, and the flaws that are software side can be fixed. So yes, this is a first gen model, and I think that obviously this company may or may not get a chance to make another one, but I think if they can put in the time to make the software changes, then I feel like these software changes can definitely push this over to an edge, over the edge to make this a reasonable product.